the first thing that we're going to do is uh, we've opened up a new document here. We're going to fill in this uh, background layer with a dark gray color. And I think I've already got one picked out here. Yes, I do. Um, and you can pick yours, just a real dark gray. And then I'm going to use the paint bucket just to fill it in real quick. Um, and uh, we'll go ahead and create a new layer. We'll call it Drops. You can just uh, click on the name and rename it to Drops or whatever you want it to be called. And I'm going to go ahead and double click on the background layer and I'm going to unlock it just by pressing OK. And now it's called Layer 0. Um, the next thing that we'll do is uh, with our Drops layer selected, and that's not such a big deal right now, but that's the next layer we're going to use, so let's have it selected. We'll uh, click on our brush in the tools palette, and we'll go up to Window, and down to Brush. Uh, what we want to do now is go up to our brush tip shape at the very top, and we want to set our uh, the shape of our brush to an ellipse, and uh, I've already done this. Um, you can d use your anchors here to change it. Um, I have mine set to 60% on the roundness, and that should be a pretty good ellipse. Um, I have the size of my brush set to about um, 25 pixels, and uh, the hardness at zero, and the spacing at 1,000%. Uh, 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 and then uh, we should be able to go on to our menu over to the left and click on Dynamic Shapes. I have size jitter set to 100, the control set to pin tilt, the minimum diameter set to 0, tilt, tilt scale set to 200, angle jitter to 100, control off, roundness jitter 41, control off, uh, minimum roundness to 48, 50, and I want to have the flip X jitter and the flip Y jitter uh, checkboxes checked. Then we'll go over to our uh, panel again to the left and click on scattering. I want uh, the checkbox for both axes clicked, and I want um, the scatter here set to 1,000%. Control set to off, count to 2, count jittered to 0, and control off. And then uh, go ahead and uh, click on uh, smoothing, and uh, just check mark that, and, uh, and we should be good to go. And you can just hide that. Okay. Uh, now what we want to make sure is that uh, we have white as our foreground color uh, over to the left in our tool palette and we're simply going to just draw a bunch of dots on the on the page and this brush should really help us to do it I always like to add a lot I'm just gonna go quick here you, uh, you can click a lot or you can kinda just drag and uh, go over just kinda drag it over click and drag that's what I'm trying to say. Okay, and uh, maybe you increase your brush size a little bit, and you can make some larger ones if you want. I'm going to. Kind of looks like snow right now. Okay, um, that's probably pretty good. Okay, um, the next thing that we want to do is uh, open our, our Layers palette there, and we're going to go ahead and go up to Layer, and down to, uh, you can do Merge Down or Merge Visible, just to make this one layer. And uh, since I had the, the top layer selected, uh, it went ahead and called this layer Drops. Uh, <clears throat> the next thing that we want to do is go up to Image, down to Adjustments, and down to Levels. We're going to set the black level in the middle to uh, 124 and the white one on the right uh, to uh, 161. We'll go ahead and just click OK on that. Then we'll go ahead and take the uh, magic wand tool on our toolbar and we're going to select the black area. And then uh, to make sure that we have all the black area, we'll go up to select and down to similar. And that should select all the black area. And then we'll uh, we'll delete this area by pressing uh, backspace, and we still have all those water droplets um, now um, selected. Uh, the next thing that we're going to do is import a picture that uh, we want to see through this foggy droplet uh, window. So what we'll do is we'll go up to uh, we'll just import we'll place 
uh, we'll go to File and Place, and we'll place whatever picture we've uh, we've picked out. And I've already picked one, and named it Fog Window JPEG. I'll place that. And then I'm simply going to resize it to uh, the same size as um, my document here, or you know, something that fits in the same size as my document. And I'll just apply it by double clicking. I'll go ahead and stick that behind the drop so you can see the drops on top of it. Uh, and I'll also go up to layer and down to rasterize and I'll go ahead and rasterize that because it placed it as a smart object. Uh, the next thing that we want to do is with uh, that picture layer selected we'll go up to a fix uh, filter down to blur and do a Gaussian blur on it. We're going to set it to uh, 20 pixels and press OK. Okay, um, now uh, here's where, where we're going to start uh, adding some of the effects layers. Uh, what we'll do is with our, uh, our picture layer selected, we'll go up to layer, down to layer style, and to uh, color overlay. We're going to select a dark gray, once again, and we will make the opacity um, 60%. So it looks like something like that. The next thing uh, we'll do, um, actually we can press OK on that. Uh, we'll want to uh, now click on our uh, water droplets layer with uh, that are all these white little dots right now. And we'll uh, go to layer styles once again. And we will select uh, blending options. We want to set our fill opacity um, to zero. And um, now then we'll go to um, inner shadow on the left there and we'll click on it to activate it. And uh, we'll use a white color. We want to set it to linear dodge. Um, we want to set the blend mode. Um, to linear dodge, and uh, we want our opacity to be to uh, 50%, the angle to be 90, um, and the distance to be 3 pixels, and the size to be 5. And we also want our contour to be this cone shape, and it's uh, it's labeled cone. If you uh, click on this and go over to it, it should uh, say cone if you click on it, or hover over it. And then uh, the next thing that we'll do is uh, add another um, adjustment or an effect layer. Uh, this one will be uh, bevel and boss, so we'll click on that. We want to set the uh, the depth to 350 pixels. We want the direction to be down. We want uh, the size to be 7. Soften at 5 pixels. Uh, we want the shading options uh, to use a 54 degree angle and the altitude to be 42. Uh, and and by, all, by any means, uh, as I'm going through this, please try your own numbers and see what you like, what you think looks the best. Uh, but, but just bear with me here and you can, you can kind of change as you go. Um, we want the, the contour to be uh, cove deep. And I think this is cove deep. Believe, yes. And um, we want the highlight mode to use 80%. And we want to, to set that to um, color dodge. We want to set the shadow mode to multiply. We'll use a black color and we'll use 50% opacity on that. And we should be good with that one. And then we'll go over to the left once again and we'll set it uh, an inner glow. Uh, then we want the blend mode set to darken. We want a 40% opacity. Uh, a black color instead of this kind of white color. So we'll just set that to black and we can just use a dark gray or a black for that. Um, we're going to change the uh, the source to edge in, unless it's already selected like mine is 
and we'll make the size 25 pixels. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and add a co uh, color overlay to this as well. So we'll click on color overlay, and we want to choose a um, a color. I've already chose. Uh, I already have one picked out. Um, 907F. This is a web color. Um, 772. So 907F72. And that's the color that I'm going to use. We're going to uh, then set it to uh, color dodge. And an opacity of about 45%. And um, then we'll add a little drop shadow. So we'll go over to the left, click on drop shadow. And we will do the um, blend mode multiply, and we'll set it to black, the opacity. We will uh, set to 20. We will change the angle to 90. Um, we're going to change the distance to 9. Um, the, the, speed, the spread to 5%. And the size will be 10. And it should be good on that. Okay, and then we'll just go ahead and press OK. And uh, if you're still following along with me, great. We're going to keep going. So uh, here's what we do next. We're going to uh, add a, um, a layer mask on this droplets layer. And what we'll do is we'll select our fog window, go up to filter. We're going to do another Gaussian blur on this. So we'll go to blur, Gaussian blur. And we're going to set it to 5 pixels this time. Actually, why don't we, before we do this, let's go ahead and uh, copy this uh, this picture layer so that we're working on a new layer. And we can just, uh, we'll just uh, make that first one uh, invisible. So now we're working on this new layer. And uh, I, I'm doing this because this is where I'm, I messed up the most when I was trying to put this together. And uh, if you mess up on a, a, a brand new layer, then you can go back easily at any time and uh, kind of change it. So so anyway, with this new layer that we've made, this new copy of layer, we'll go up to Filter, we'll go down to Blur, and we'll do a Gaussian Blur of 5 pixels. And we'll press OK. Then what we'll do is we'll um, click on our um, Drops layer, and we'll right-click on it, and we'll uh, select select Pixels. And that'll select all of our water droplets. <clears throat> We then, with uh, our that same layer still selected, go up to um, layer, down to layer mask, and reveal selection, and that'll reveal the uh, the the uh, the blur that we just made on this layer here, and it'll it should re uh, reveal it only below the water droplets. Um, so. Yeah, you see now when we we could actually get rid of this layer if we want. So I'm just going to leave that one invisible and use our original uh, fog uh, foggy picture layer. Um, but you could leave it visible if you want. It's really not doing anything. So okay, now with our uh, droplets layer selected and with the uh, with the layer mask selected, we're going to go to filter down to blur and we're going to do a motion blur. We're going to do a negative 90 um, and the angle at uh, 80 pixels for distance. And we'll select OK. Um, and, the, and you'll see um, a lot of your water droplets will kind of seemingly disappear, except for the big ones. We'll um, then, uh, with that same uh, layer mask selected, we go up to a, uh, image adjustments, and we'll do uh, levels, and we're going to do similar levels as we did before. So we'll do 124 on the left and 161 on the right, and as you can see, a lot of our water droplets have disappeared. So if you just spread these out a little bit, um, they should come back a little bit. Okay, and you can kind of mess around with these a little bit until it looks pretty good. We'll press OK. 
Um, what I'm going to do um, is I'll go ahead and copy this droplets layer so that we have a copy on top. And I'm going to go ahead and dis disable the layer mask on that one so it shows all those extra droplets through as well as the ones that we just kind of um, did that effect to. Okay. Um, the next thing that we're going to do is add some type to the uh, to the to the image. Um, and what I'll do is um, we'll go ahead and since this is our kind of dark layer, this there is a uh, kind of our dark layer. What we'll do is we'll copy that layer and what we'll do is on on this original layer we'll go into our effects and we're going to just disable that effect so that it's uh, that bright color once again so we have one layer that's this bright color and a copy of that same layer that has that color overlay and what we do is we want to put that uh, actually we can leave it right there and what we want to do is uh, make a clipping ma or a, a layer mask and we can just select our uh, layer mask button right there. And uh, you simply then will take your eraser tool, or you can use text and uh, and delete it out with um, your magic wand or something. And what we'll do is we'll just simply um, we'll just draw in what we want our text to be. And I'll just do GDB stands for Glazefolio Design Blog because that's where you're seeing this hopefully. And so now we have this look um, that kind of looks like somebody drew that on the window. Um, and we're going to keep going with that. Um, okay. So. Let's see. I'm just looking at my notes here for a second. Uh, if you want, this would be a good opportunity to uh, copy this uh, droplets layer. And it just what it'll do is it'll add more droplets if you want more droplets, and you can just move them a little bit. Of course, move them far enough away that people can't tell that you copied them. And you can do that a couple times if you want. But uh, I think that looks pretty good, so I'm going to leave it like that. Uh, and you can go ahead and delete these layer masks if you want. I have them disabled right now, but we can delete them. And actually, if you want to, you can press shift and click on both of those and merge them together and make them one layer. So I will. So now those are one layer. Um, and now what I'll do is uh, duplicate this layer that I drew on. It has this layer mask. So I just drag it into my layer and I'll duplicate it. And I'm going to delete the layer mask on this one. And then uh, I'll uh, I'll go up to layer, down to layer mask, and to hide all. And that should show. Uh, that'll make a new layer mask, and it'll it'll show our text through it, and it just looks a little bit nicer so far. Um, then we'll select the thumb of the layer mask, which is already selected, and we'll go to um, filter up at the top down to render into clouds. And that kind of just makes it look a little duller and makes it, it fills that with clouds, that cloud effect, and it makes it look like, well, you can see it, it looks a little bit more realistic. Um, and then what we'll do is we will select all of our layers. So we can press shift and select all of our layers. And what we'll do is um, go ahead and duplicate all of them. So we'll just drag all of those layers that we selected in there. And then uh, we can merge all those together if we want. So we'll go to uh, Layer, down to Merge Layers, and it will merge all those together. Um, I'm not renaming these. It might be a good idea for you to rename them to keep them straight as we go along, but I don't want to waste your time with that. So you rename them. I won't. Okay. Uh, the next thing that we'll do is go up to Filter, down to Blur, into Gaussian Blur. And we'll do uh, 20 pixel Gaussian Blur. And we'll press OK. 
And then we'll change the blend mode to overlay on this layer. And we'll set it to uh, opacity 40%. Um, we'll go ahead and uh, duplicate this layer now, the one that we just, uh, just uh, changed the opacity and overlay to 40%. And we'll change the blend mode to screen on this one. And um, we'll keep the same 40% opacity. Okay, uh, now you should have something that looks kind of like this. Um, what we'll do now is we'll add a new layer. And you can rename that gradient or something. Uh, we're going to fill it with a radial gradient. That's why we would want to rename it that. So we'll find our gradient tool. And we're going to make sure that we have our radial gradient selected up at the top. We want it going from... Um, a dark gray to a light gray, so I'll click on this and I'm going to go ahead and change this color down here to a lighter gray instead of a white. And, uh, and I'm going to, it's okay there, and we're going to change our mode here to multiply, our blend mode, and then what we'll do is we'll just simply um, make our gradient, and I've made mine possibly too dark on the edges. Let's uh, let's make a gray, or our black here, let's make that to a dark gray instead of a black. So we'll make a, a kind of a medium dark gray. And now that I've changed that, let's try it again. Okay, that's looking a little better. Might want to change actually this gray over here a little bit lighter. So we want a really light gray to a fairly dark gray, but not too dark. And you obviously just keep messing around with it, just like I just did, until you get something that you like. And uh, I'm okay with how it looks right now. Um, I don't really... It, it could be a little better, but uh, you can see how it's kind of supposed to look. And uh, this is pretty much our final result. Um, you have this window here. And, uh, and if you don't like the way that that last layer looks, or any of the other layers for that matter, uh, simply, you know, just take the opacity down a little bit. I'll change this one to 75 so that you can uh, see a little bit more of the window. And I think that looks a little bit better already. Uh, so but anyway, this is, uh, this is what you have. So you have um, this, uh, this effect that kind of shows um, the background of the, the street back behind um, uh, a window looking thing that has uh, some condensation on it. And, uh, and uh, it, it's, a, it's a pretty cool use. You can use it a lot of different ways. Instead of making look like you used your finger, you can make it look like you used a squeegee or something like that. Or, uh, you know, the sky's the limit. Play around with it. That's, uh, that's the ticket. So, I hope you learned something. Um, please follow me on uh, Facebook and Twitter, and uh, subscribe to my blog, and subscribe to me on YouTube. And uh, thanks again.